what I want to do now is give you uh, an example, a very specific example, of how some of this kind of information and planning was used in the greater Munich area. I showed you before sort of the map and the way churches were planted around Munich. And one of the things that was done actually in the 1980s, just before that was really began to take off, is we did a study of the greater Munich area. And what I have here is a map that we actually use uh, to sort of look at the greater Munich area. And what this basically is, is it is uh, the commuter rail system primarily and the public transportation system. And essentially, all the major rail road, uh, uh, commuter rail goes into the center of town. And then these would be the outlying towns and villages. And uh, you can kind of see a little bit these, these colored areas that sort of follow these rail lines outward. Because one of the things about the way this city is sort of structured and the mentality in the city is that people think along those rail lines towards the town, towards downtown. In other words, if we were to start a church here, somebody from this town, even though it's closer, would probably not think to drive across this way to go to church. And though even though it might be farther, they'd rather commute into the city. But if it was along the commuter line, they would tend to think, well, maybe that's someplace I would go. So there was just sort of this, you have to understand sort of, again, even the, the structures of transportation and uh, the way the whole city is expanded out. Another thing we knew is that there are certain communities, as the city grew, it would sort of swallow up little towns and then they would be, become part of, they'd become incorporated into the city. And so some of these towns out this way that are technically a part of the city of Munich, they kind of have their own little local character. And so those are the kind of communities where you say it probably just sort of needs its own church because it has its own community character and people take a little pride in their own community in that way. So there were a few things we did. And so initially the thought was not to start the other uh, church in the city, but in one of these suburbs. So we looked, did demographic study of all these towns and we would gather it along these various rail routes and uh, you can see one of these goes out towards Dachau. This would be Dachau County, where eventually we started a church. Or down this way, which goes towards Ottobrunn, where the church was started in 1987. And so uh, we gathered information. What are the growing communities? What are communities that uh, seem to have a good future in terms of their development, have good age structure, and so on? Which of these communities have no churches? which already have churches. Um, and uh, also, where do some of our church members already live? Remember, we talked about that sort of that diaspora concept. And in, as we mentioned, there were a number of families who did live down in this area that became the core of that church. And out in Dachau area, there was the home groups that came from the North Munich Church and from the Central Munich Church that lived out in this area. And so that became several factors. It was a growth area. There were families there. It became a factor to determine to plant a church out there. And there were some people coming to know the Lord. And so uh, this is one way of looking at the larger urban, suburban uh, area of the city. Um, one of the other factors is the more you begin to get out into the rural areas, again, the character begins to change. Uh, more village life can be more traditional and people are often less open to spiritual change, especially if they are very committed to the traditional religion or church of that community, uh, change comes more slowly. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you do have a commuter area, people are often in new communities looking for new relationships. Remember I mentioned some people had moved out of the city because affordable housing for larger families was in the more distant areas? Well, those people are looking for relationships. They're new. In some traditional communities, people have grown up there, they've got their relationships, they've lived there for generations. Their relationships are already tight and fixed. But in communities where people are moving in, maybe for the first time, well, their families are somewhere else. They're looking for new relationships. And so as they enter this community, they're open. And uh, for example, we lived uh, just outside of the city in one of these kind of communities. 
And uh, we became involved actually through the kindergarten. One of our kids was in kindergarten. And uh, my wife was able to start an evangelistic Bible study with some of the other mothers whose children were in the kindergarten. Well, they're people open for relationships. And uh, so it's much easier to gain access to the community in that way. Um, and so all these are different kinds of factors that you want to take into consideration. Now, I, I want to show you a summary. This particular study was really geared more to looking at the, the suburbs the, 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 along the commuter rail lines. I want to show you now a study we did about 10 years later um, in the early 1990s of the city of Munich as we were beginning to to say we want to saturate the city of Munich with churches. We want every neighborhood to have a gospel preaching, healthy, a missional church located in every community. And so on the basis of the Evangelical Alliance and a group of other churches, uh, we agreed together to share our information, to do a major study of the city and find out the places where there were spiritual need, to find out what churches were really reaching new people, where uh, we needed to focus and how great was the spiritual need of our city. And this is what we came up with. You'll see here, again, this is a map of the city of Munich and these dotted lines represent those commuter lines. So, so this would be, these would be the commuter trains, but, and this thick dark line is the city limits. Uh, so this is not including, as the other map did, all those further out villages and towns. So we're looking just at the city limits. Now there's a couple things, again, to get a feel for the city, to understand the nature of the city. Right here you can see um, the Izar River, it says Izar right there, the Izar River flows through the middle of the city. And this is a pretty good sized river. And there are actually not that many bridges for traffic over the river. There's also a major park. Uh, along the river down in this area here called Englischer Garten. And basically the city's kind of divided in half east and west by the river. And um, another factor that sort of divides the city are the major rail lines. Now you can see the commuter rail lines kind of come together and go through here. The rail lines sort of divide the city, especially over in this part, between north and south. In fact, right in here there's a large switching area where freight trains uh, park and then tr switch their, uh, the, uh, the rail cars and so on. And so there's a major division uh, north-south along this route. And so basically it's not divided quite as much on this side. So you have the city of thirds. There's sort of a third over here, sort of a third in the north, and then a third here kind of in the southeast. And so this is again just sort of getting a feel for the way the city's structured, how people relate, their transportation routes and so on, how they relate to their communities. Now each of these little red dots, again this is, this is like a photograph in a moment of time uh, 20 years ago now, but to just give you an idea, each one of these red dots represented a church that we would consider a, a Bible teaching um, Christ-centered church. Uh, there were a few Lutheran churches, Baptist churches, Pentecostal, even a couple of house churches we counted in this. So we tried to be very generous in the way we're just considering any church that would be a light for Jesus Christ in their community. And uh, you'll begin to notice there's in the inner city area, there's sort of a cluster. Many of these churches had been around for quite a while. They were older churches. And then over here, there's a little cluster of churches. What was going on there, you ask? Why is there a cluster of churches? Well, because there was a large Lutheran church there, very evangelically oriented, and they actually allowed their building to be used by a couple of other churches. And so there were a number of congregations that sort of gathered around there. And then out here, this would be passing a section of the city that used to be its own city or its own town that later was sort of incorporated into the city of Munich it kind of had its own character and uh, its own little community feel. And so a number of churches were sort of clustered and established in this area here. And then as you begin to go out, you notice there are sections of the city where here's whole city districts. These inside lines are, that would be a city district number 10. 
City District 24, um, and so on. And so in this district, as you see, there's only one church um, out here, just one church. Way down here, just one church. And so we begin to say, hmm, a lot of the churches are, are more focused in the center of the city. And certainly there are no doubt believers who live in these neighborhoods who commute to those churches in the city. Well, one of the things as we did, began to survey these different churches, we found out that these churches, a lot of these outlying churches were the churches that were growing. They were in immediate proximity to their neighborhoods. They were able to reach out. Some of these neighborhoods were newer. People were more open. They were growing communities. And so we felt that a strategy would be to have in each of the local uh, city districts, churches that were reaching out with the gospel that could become growing churches and a witness for Christ and to reach those neighborhoods. Now, one of the ways we kind of mapped this out was to find out the population of each of these city districts. And again, all of this would be, back then it wasn't available online, but nowadays it's all available online, is uh, you go and you get the, the statistical data. How many people live in these districts? What's the population structure and so on? And how many churches are there? And so we calculate what is the ratio of number of residents per church. In other words, there's one church per how many thousand residents. And this is what it looked like. So you can see that in the, these uh, districts here, these would be the inner city districts in the center of town. You had roughly one church per, in this case, maybe about 10,000, one church per 20,000 people. That means if these churches were going to be really evangelistic and really reaching out, one church would have to reach, in this case of District 1, 20,000 people. Look what happens over here. In District 11, one church would have to reach nearly 100,000 people. Or the ratio in District 16, one church would have to reach nearly 100,000 people. These were tremendously spiritually needy communities where it didn't have many local churches. But what is more, the green beams represent districts where we could not identify a single church that was preaching the gospel and attempting to reach out. And so here, for example, District 9, uh, roughly 60,000 people where there was no gospel preaching church. And so we began to get a feel if we're going to plant new churches in the city, where are those communities where the spiritual need is the greatest? Now, that's not the only factor. As I said, there's many other factors to consider, but this is certainly one to know. Another thing, we looked at the various ethnic groups and uh, asked ourselves, is there any outreach to some of these ethnic groups? Because some of these are, are immigrant groups where the people do not speak German or they speak very little German. And so they really do need a specialized outreach. And so if you looked at this time in the 90s, there was a civil war, of course, in what used to be Yugoslavia, so Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia, and so on. And we had many, many refugees that had come to the city. And uh, so you can see that from those, not even counting Croatia, you had about 70,000 people that had come into the city, many refugees living in the city. And all we knew of, of was one worship service that was attempting to reach them in their mother tongue. Tremendous need. We actually ended up having some ministry. We had some former uh, Croatians in our, our church. They were, they were Croatian that had lived in Germany for a number of years that became believers. And through then their family networks, we ended up having a ministry to some of those people. But it was very minimal. Uh, Croatian was a little bit better. Turkish people. Now this is just the official number uh, of roughly 40,000 people with Turkish passports. This does not count the children who would now have German passports. But uh, this was just the first generation Turkish people living in Germany, roughly almost 50,000. In fact, it was surely more than that. Um, there were probably a lot of people living there not on the record. Um, and uh, we could only find two workers. There was no Bible study, there was no church. There were, there were two workers who spoke Turkish. They'd been former missionaries in Turkey that were now working in the city. There's a big population 
hard to reach population. You know, it's very difficult to send a missionary to Turkey. But uh, Germany has roughly four million Turkish people, and we have no restriction on reaching them there. Well, this was a great need. A Greek speaking, we had 22,000 Greek speaking people, no Protestant church. Uh, 20,000 Italians, no Protestant church. No, we couldn't find identify an Italian language Bible study even. And you can just go down. Uh, of course, English, where there were five church services in English. That was not a problem. You have a lot of international churches and so on. So, and you can go right down Polish, French, and so on. And so this, this identified, uh, again, sort of these subcultures, people groups, ethnic groups that need a specialized outreach. What church is going to raise to that task? As I mentioned, our church eventually started a French-speaking service, but it was mainly with Africans who were from French-speaking countries, not with the, one of the people who led it was actually French, a believer from France, but we were reaching French-speaking Africans that lived in the city. So we want to raise our awareness and, and pray about this. As you begin to pray about this, these are just not numbers. These are people who need Jesus. And so this information then becomes a stimulation for prayer. Lord, you love these people. Lord, is there anybody that can really communicate the gospel to them in a way that they'll understand it in, in their language and their heart language and can, can help them with the adjustments they're facing? So this was uh, one way of, of assessing the spiritual need. We found out that only one in three people out of a thousand, so that's 0.3 percent, attended an evangelical worship service in that city. To reach the goal of even one evangelical church per 10,000 residents, Munich needed 100 new churches. Now when we presented this information to the churches, the Evangelical Alliance, and, and the pastors, most of them were shocked. They would say, we thought there were already so many churches here. We thought we were doing pretty good. I mean, after all, there's two Methodist churches, three Baptist churches, a couple evangelical, and a couple Pentecostal churches. We thought we had, we thought we had this study covered. But the facts became very loud. We have a job to do. There's a lot of people to reach in this city, and there's a lot of neighborhoods without a church, or certainly not enough churches. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TBS Ministry. For more information, please visit tbsseminary.com. This is a table that we put together, and again, um, most of this information was publicly accessible, um, where uh, we had, this would be the listing of the various 24 city districts. Here, the number of evangelical churches in each district, that was in that bar graph that you saw before. This is the population in each district. Here's the growth. The absolute growth, this district grew by 2,930 people, absolute. In other words, when you took everybody who moved away, everybody moved there, what's the net result? And then here is the result in percentage. So it grew by 6%, plus 6%. This section of the city grew by 23%. This was a growing part of the city. Well, guess what part of the city we ended up planning our church? It was in that section of the city. It was growing by 23%. It had a large population of, of already about 12,000. Total population, almost 65,000. We had the number of foreigners who lived in any city section, the number of age structure, 14% under 18, 13% over 65. Here we had the number of how many people were moving in and out, the percentage of changes in households, here was the number of new uh, residential units that were built in a two-year period in that city. We could see from the city statistics where the new housing was being built. 
And so th this section of the city had a lot of new housing, 1,500 new housing units. This section of the city had 2,200 new housing units. And so we could see these were the growing areas. Here would be the number of Roman Catholic, number of Protestant, and then miscellaneous. Now Protestant, again, this would include Lutherans uh, that may be believers, they may be nominal who go to church once a year. And so we tried to restrict our numbers to those active Christians who we knew were committed uh, to churches that were preaching the gospel and active members. So that's the way we assess and you could compare then in the bottom we had sort of the total so you could see the city average and you could compare any section of the city with the district to see if this district was above average or below average in terms of its growth or um, some of these other factors that were important. Now again this is just looking at purely statistical demographic kind of information. Um, doesn't look particularly spiritual until you realize the spiritual needs that some of these numbers represent. And um, then these other factors will come into play as well. So let me give you uh, a couple points of application here as to uh, where you might be able to uh, take the next steps where you're at. What sources of information are available in your location to help you better understand your community? Have you looked in the internet? Have you gone to city offices? Have you gone to different community groups that uh, could be able to tell you about some of the needs in your community, the makeup of your community? Um, have you done an assessment, how many universities, how many students there are? Um, all these kinds of questions. Um, answer the questions on the side discerning opportunities as they relate to your community. Prayerfully go through those questions and maybe together with your leadership team asking, what are the opportunities that God has given us here? Where are those needs where God is opening up a door to the hearts of the people? Where we can demonstrate the love of Christ in a practical way, a realistic way. And then develop a plan to more effectively serve your community and reach people for Christ. Because we love people, we want to understand the people. And when we understand them, we can understand better how to communicate the gospel in a way that they will clearly understand. So that's the exercise that I would leave for you.